In today's video, I'm going to talk about the Tudors, giving a general overview of Tudor English history, before following it up with in-detail videos on related subjects. If you like my videos, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos. Please also leave a comment down below if you want me to cover any future subjects. Before the Tudors seized the throne in 1485, England had been ruled by a family called the Plantagenets. Then the crown was taken by the Lancaster family, but in 1455 a family called the Yorks threatened the throne. Fighting broke out and the famous battle went down in English history as the War of the Roses. It was named this after the emblems used on the royal houses, a red rose for the Lancasters and a white rose for the Yorks. Ten major battles and a few minor clashes were fought during the 30 year long battle. It finally ended when the Lancastrian claimant, Henry Tudor, defeated and killed the York King Richard III in the Battle of the Bosworth Field on August 22nd, 1485. Henry's victory proved to be a turning point in English history. He ended the feud and married Elizabeth of York, the daughter of King Edward IV. In doing so, he united the Yorks and the Lancasters into a new royal family, the Tudors, creating a new emblem, linking both roses together called the Tudor Rose. As soon as he was married, Henry set about controlling the power of his overmighty nobles. He banned their private armies and made sure that they were punished if they broke the law. These measures restored order to the country. Henry VII was a sharp man who, having seized the throne by force, he managed to keep it by the subtle use of royal powers and a strong government. He was the first English king to have his own personal bodyguard, as he was very suspicious and insecure. The bodyguards are still on duty today at the Tower of London. They are called the Yeoman of the Guard. He did this because during his reign, impostors tried to seize the throne. The first was Lambert Simnel, claimed to be the nephew of Edward IV, but he was easily defeated. The second, Perkin Warbeck, claimed to be the long-lost brother of Elizabeth of York and caused Henry trouble till he was caught and executed in 1499. When Henry became king, England's wealth was in a poor state of affairs, almost bankrupt even. But he was a great businessman and he kept close watch on all of the crown's finances and taxed and fined subjects whenever he could. He personally checked and signed every page of his own household's accounts and after his death in 1509 he left the crown's finances in surplus. He encouraged trade and kept England out of foreign entanglements. Henry VII and his family ruled until 1603 producing two of England's most colourful monarchs, Henry VIII and Elizabeth I, but I'll talk more about those in detail in future videos. Henry VII died in April 1509 and was buried beside his wife Elizabeth of York who died in 1503. The Westminster Abbey was their final resting place of all Tudor monarchs except Henry VIII. At his funeral the Bishop of Rochester John Fisher said, King Henry if thou were alive again, many one that is here, present now, would pretend a full great pity and tenderness upon thee. In my next video, I'm going to explore the Tudor era in a lot more detail. Thank you for watching.